Hello everyone, it's Dawn Gage, um, fourth grade at McClendon Elementary. Today, I just wanted to spend um, a little bit of time talking to you about um, collaboration and creativity using Flipgrid with your students. So um, if you've not used Flipgrid before, um, I know many people have and have heard of it, but if you've not, then Flipgrid is a good way to get your students collaborating with each other using video. So it's a web-based program. So if you go to flipgrid.com, then you'll see that you can go in and sign up if you don't already have an account. Um, when you sign up, you can just log in with Google. So when I go in and I log into the account, when it first opens up, it comes up to your groups. Now, if you don't already have groups, um, then you would create a new group over here. When you click on the blue plus sign, um, it asks you to name your group, to choose a theme, um, and then it shows you ways that you can link with others to be able to go in and join. So you can go in um, and you can type in emails for students if you choose. Um, you can provide them with a link. Um, and then when you click create group, it will create your group. Now, so I already have a couple of groups here that I've created for my class. Um, and of course, if I am wanting to send it to them like this, I can go to the share button and it will give me a link that I can invite my students with and I can go into my canvas and I can use that. Another interesting thing that, that you can do is you can actually integrate Flipgrid directly into your canvas, which is what I did right here. Um, to do that, basically you're using over here um, by where you've created your profile you would see in settings and you'll see integrations. So under integrations with Canvas, you would add a new integration, you would name it, and then they would give you a consumer key and a shared secret that you would then go in and use in your Canvas account. So when you go into your Canvas account and you've created um, an assignment, then you can go in and under external tools, you would click on Flipgrid and then it will pop up and it will um, create, if it's your first time, a class for you. After that, then every time you get ready to go in, it will go and it will put an assignment into the class that you integrated with Canvas. Okay, in your settings, you also have a place where when you're creating topics and lessons, there's a default topic where you can set all the defaults for all the videos that the students do. Um, they can have video and text comments, video comments only, text comments only, or no comments from anyone at all. But again, if your point is trying to get collaboration with others, um, it's always good to let the students either have um, to have some type of comments that they can leave, whether it be by video or by text. Um, you can adjust how long the default for the videos would be, and so they can be up to 10 minutes long when your students are recording. Um, you can choose closed captions and what language. You can also choose on their responses if they can attach links, if they can add, um, allow downloads of their videos for people to share, um, or allow likes to videos and to display a video count. And then of course, there are also the camera links um, that have the essentials like text, drawing, photos, stickers, frames, and boards. Um, as well as adding sticky notes while they record and expressions. And then when you update the default settings, then this should be the default whenever students get ready to go in and do an assignment for you. It saves you a little bit of time later on. Um, also, you can add any social media accounts that you have, um, or also what a little bit about yourself. And then of course your regular settings that you have in here, such as, um, what you want to do with your accounts. So to get back to our groups, so your groups are your classrooms and that's where you put your topics. Now your topics can be something that you've created. So let me go in here because this one came from my canvas and it's blank. There's not really anything in it. Every time you add a topic, it will be listed right here. Um, so if I click on this, you'll see that there's really nothing in here other than it says it was automatically generated from Canvas assignment. And it says click the record button to get started. Now, 
down here, it can say add the first response. They click on it. It gives them um, a screen that they can record on, and then they can respond to whatever the assignment asks. But since I don't really have very much here, then I would need to go in and I would need to edit that assignment in some way. Edit topic allows you to edit. You can change the title, the description, and then of course, if you want to import an image, record a video for your students right there, you can add Bitmojis and stickers, you can upload video, you can add YouTube or Vimeo videos, um, add an integration or add attachments. And of course, then again, if there's something you want to change in the settings that you set as default, you can click over here on settings. You can make sure it stays active. I would suggest where it says moderate video comments, have that turned on. Um, just because unless you really know your students, and especially with if you're doing younger students, you always want to be able to preview their videos and see it before you put it out for everyone else. Um, again, with comments, you can change it to video comments only, video and text comments. Um, and then, of course, you can also schedule how long do they have in order to be able to get into this assignment. Um, another thing that can be set on here is a guest password. So if you wanted to send something out for parents um, and families to be able to see something that the student has done or administrators, you could set a guest password so that you could send that link out and they would use that guest password to be able to see it. Um, and of course, any changes you make, you hit save, and then that would save it to your lessons in here. So back out into groups. Now, if you're not sure how you want to get started with something, there are a numerous number of assignments that are already there. So over here again, under um, where your profile is located, you will see something that says discovery. When you click on discovery, it will take you to where there are over 43,000 topics created by the Flipgrid community that are ready-made that you can use. And so there's all sorts of topics and other things down here. Um, you have a My Library, so that if you save a topic to your library um, into a collection, if you click on that, then you can find those topics in here, or you can act actually put it directly into one of your uh, one of your groups. So down here, there are um, you can browse by subject. There are partners that they work with that you could find things from to help create assignments. Um, but down here is where you would actually get the most information. So you can choose a subject down here. There are, sub, you know, music, math, physical education, all sorts of things you can do. You can choose age level of your students down here um, or the people that you're using this with. And then, of course, you can go in and you can search topics. So, for instance, if I wanted to do... Um, my students are doing poetry right now, so if I wanted to go in and do something with poetry, I could do a search on poetry. And then it'll give me some different activities, like there's learn to write a haiku. Um, there are pocket poems. There are poetry celebrations, multimedia poems, poetry readings. And so any of these things that you choose on here. So, for instance, if I'm interested in fourth grade narrative poetry, I can click on that. This would be um, what it would look like. This is what the kids would see. It'll say, recite a narrative poem that you wrote about things that you love to do. And so the students would need to sit down and write a narrative poem. And then you would have them practice it and then go in and read it onto Flipgrid so that their classmates and they could share with their classmates. Um, so if you wanted to add this topic under add topic, you can either add directly to your groups you can create a new group to add it to, or you can save for later. So if I click save for later, I can choose a collection, either favorites or some other collection I've made, click done, and now it's saved it into my library. And so say I wanted to look at some other things here. This one um, says we've been working on fluency by reading weekly poems. So they're supposed to choose a poem from a poetry folder and record it um, for your friends. So there's many different things. Um, some of them have video attached to them. Um, this one has a video right here in which they're teaching them to write a haiku. 
and then they would go in and write their own haiku and then record it for others. So there's many different things that you can choose for the students to do with this. Um, once you choose an assignment, so for instance, I've got under my library here. Um, so say for instance, I wanted to go in and do um, a book talk. And so have my students go in and answer that. I can add the topic to whatever groups I choose to add it to. And of course you can do more than one group at a time. So you can go in and choose again and save it to groups. And then of course, when you go to my topics, which is right there next to groups, it'll show you all the topics you've assigned, or you can just go into groups and you can look at groups. So when you pull up that group, you will see that there are some things that are assigned. So when they go in and they click on it, okay, this is what they would see. What is your favorite book and why? And so down here, when they get to the bottom, they'd be add the first responses. Um, you can add one as an example for your students and then students can go in and they can add their own. Um, when you're finished, basically when students have added something, there should be a list of responses down here um, that if you've turned it on that you need to watch it first, then you'll be able to go in, watch their videos and approve them, and then their classmates will be able to see them. The other thing that I really like about this is it is integrated with Immersive Reader. So on here, if you have your students that have difficulty um, reading or some of your really young students, um, if they click on the Immersive Reader, then it will pull up the text for the lesson and they can play that text as well. So. This program is really good for allowing your students to collaborate with each other. It is an excellent program for your ELs, um, for them to be able to do some practice with listening and speaking. Um, so those are very, very important skills. And also, especially for your younger grades, um, where the students might not be able to write out a lot of things in a journal. This is a good video journal for a lot of students um, to be able to kind of keep track of some things or for you to get students to share with you and with their classmates when you may not have time during class. There are so many things students can go in and explain a math problem and how they solved it. They can go in and, work and, and, and talk about a science topic and explain that topic. Um, and so it's really good for you as an instructor to get an idea of what your students know um, and for them to share with each other as well back and forth. Um, the kids really enjoy it. And um, if you've not used it before, I do encourage you to go out and, and give it a try and use it with your students. Um, I hope that you got something useful out of this. Um, if you have questions, my email is down here, dana.gage at communityisd.org. And I would be happy to sit down with anyone and um, help you work through getting started. Thanks.